Hey guys, it's Eric here at Farpoint Farms. Check it out. It's another episode of our series on solar setups. Tonight, part six, we're talking about how to get the energy and the power from our solar setup to where we need it in the house. This is more specifically aimed towards whole house systems or partial house systems and not so much towards campers or RVs. So if you're looking at that kind of a setup, well, you can probably skip over this episode. But for those of you who are homeowners and you're interested in lowering or removing your power bills altogether, you've got to figure out a way to get the power from your inverter into your main fuse box without upsetting the state. And this is a big issue. So there are two ways you can do this. We have what's called a grid tie solar setup. And if you're interested in this, you've probably gone as far as you can with my series because you're going to want to have that done professionally. Most municipalities do not allow you to set up your own solar system and then do a grid tie on your own. There are a few co-ops for electrical co-ops that do allow that, but they're pretty, pretty rare, pretty few and far between. And off, uh, we ran into issues here at the house trying to set one up. The cost was, I think, $20,000 for a system that would feed the grid when we didn't need to use the power and they would just lower our bill. I didn't like that idea. The other problem with that is when the power goes out, you still have no power because you have no batteries. It's an interesting system. It's not one I'm really going to get into much here in this series, but grid tie is a thing. It is usually done through the power company. And if you are asking my personal opinion on whether or not you should invest in a grid tie system, the answer is no. I don't think you should. But for tonight, I'm going to show you another way to lower or remove your bills altogether when it comes to power by using what's called a generator transfer switch. So a generator transfer switch is exactly what it sounds like. It is a way when the power goes out or when you don't want to use grid power to fire up a gas or diesel generator. Sometimes these are referred to as whole home generators and it back ties into your main house wiring and then feeds all of your circuits. So you don't have to run extension cords. You're not worrying about trying to figure out how to, how to get the refrigerator powered up, but the kids Xbox powered up on the other side of the house. None of that is a problem because you are using the same wiring, the same circuits, the same outlets, the same fuses as you would when you were running the house off of shore power, right? State current, something coming out of the power company. A transfer switch allows you to switch effortlessly and seamlessly between those two power sources. So in our case, we're getting a 10 switch transfer box and that's going to allow us to pipe in 240 volts from our main system, our inverter slash charger combo that we purchased. That's going to come into our transfer box and then it feeds into each of the individual fuses that we have chosen. In our case, we're going to be running a well pump off a 220 or 240 line. And then we're running our outlets, our kitchen appliances, our bathroom uh, outlets, as well as our lighting on both sides of the house and the outlets on both sides of the house. So it ends, we're gonna have two, two spots open. I might do a 240 leg there and also run our water heater when the power is out altogether. But for the most part, that will maintain on shore power, on, on city current. We're not gonna get rid of all of our power requirements from the state quite yet. So we're doing what's called a hybrid system. It's a really good setup. It's a really good idea. You can scale it up. So if you install a transfer box and a transfer switch, and you only have a thousand watts and a small inverter, and you're only running 120, you can still run one leg of your house. So the transfer switch is something that uh, you know is 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 a pretty darn cool thing. In the event that somehow or another power were to go out and the solar were to go out, you could still hook it to a regular gas generator and backfeed generated power into your house that way as well. And that's really where it came from. Most of the time you see these systems, you'll go to houses that are out in rural areas like myself, and you'll have a, 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 a nice 240 plug outside, and that is for the transfer switch. There are two types. What I'm talking about is a grid tied uh, transfer switch where you have a, a separate fuse box, you have toggle switches, up is for shore power, off is off all the way, and down is for solar or a gas generator if you choose to do that as well. Now there is another type which has got a lockout. This is a less expensive option, but for the use of solar, if you want to go this route, you have to have enough solar energy coming in to power your entire house 
for what you feel like is going to be an unlimited amount of time. Because there's no picking and choosing circuits with a lockout. You are either on power coming in from the street or you are cutting that power off from the street and operating solely on solar. For that reason, I don't recommend the cheaper route, although for a small outbuilding, I am using that setup. So we have our main house and our main solar system. We are also doing smaller solar systems, which I'll get into in the next part of this series, which is all-in-one portable power units. And I'll show you how I rig those in and get those set up as well. So that's it. This is a pretty short video, but I wanted to let you know this is how you tie it all in. Because I think, for myself anyway, when I first got this set up, I went about it all wrong. I ran separate lines into the house, not through the fuse box, but through their own separate fuse box outside. And I had outlets, but that meant I had to plug things in to those outlets to run specifically off solar. And if the solar went down for any reason, or if we needed to switch back to shore power, I had to physically unplug it and plug it into the outlet next to it. It wasn't very clean, it wasn't very smart, and I wish I had known better, but now you do. Till next time, my friends.